Welcome back. Today we are going through lesson 4-7, which is about solving quadratic equations by the quadratic formula. So we've talked before about factoring as a method of solving and square rooting as a method. Um, some equations, though, we can't do that with either of them. So they have an x squared and an x term, but they're not factorable. So in these situations, we can use the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula to find our solutions for x, it's the opposite of the b value plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times the a. So that quadratic formula allows us to solve any quadratic when it's not factorable, can't be solved by the square root method. So when we read it out loud, we say x equals the opposite of b. So if b is negative, we make it positive. Positive becomes negative plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. All right, so let's get into this. So we're going to start with some basic ones, solving for real solutions. So let's start with this first one. Um, it always helps me to identify the a, b, and c values so that I can make sure I'm plugging in the right thing. So again, we need to make sure it's equal to zero first. And then a is five, b is three, and c in this case is negative two. So I'm going to plug those in here. So the opposite of three is negative three plus and minus the square root of b squared minus four times the a value times the c value, all divided by two times the a value. Okay, so simplifying that, I get negative three plus or minus the square root of nine, and then the four times five times negative two becomes plus 40 all over 10. Simplifying that, I get negative three plus or minus the square root of 49 over 10. So that would be negative three plus and minus seven over 10. So this is where I get my two solutions. So I'm gonna do negative three plus seven and get four over 10. And I'm gonna do negative three minus seven and get negative 10 over 10. So when I reduce those, my solutions are negative one and two fifths. And those are exact, so we don't need approximate solutions in this one. Okay, let's look at another one here. So A is three, B is one, and C is negative one. So plugging those in, opposite of one is negative one, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c, all divided by two times the a value. Simplifying that, I get negative one plus or minus the square root of one plus 12, and that would be over six now. Simplifying that, we get negative one plus or minus the square root of 12 over six. Now the square root of 12, oh no, that would be the square root of 13. Let's fix that. Okay, so now square root of 13, we cannot reduce or simplify it at all. So that would be my final answer. And so the exact solutions would be negative one plus or minus the square root of 13 over six. If I type that in, so I do negative one plus the square root of 13 over six and negative one minus the square root of 13 over six, my two solutions would be negative 0 0.77 and positive 0 0.43 it's decimals. Okay, let's look at two more here. So notice that C and D here are not equal to zero. So the first thing I need to do is get them equal to zero. So I would add four 
to get it equal to zero. So my a would be one, because there's just one x squared. b would be six, and c would end up being positive four. So my quadratic formula would be the opposite of six, plus or minus the square root of six squared, minus four times one times four, all divided by two times one. Simplifying that, we would get the square root of 36 minus 16 over two. And that would give me negative six plus or minus the square root of 20 over two. And 20 can be simplified. So when we simplify 20, it would be the square root of four times the square root of five. So the square root of four is two times the square root of five, all over two. And then we just want to reduce. So remember when you're doing this, a common mistake is to just do six divided by two. You have to divide everything by that denominator. So negative six divided by two is negative three. And then you also have to divide that number in front of the root. So it would be plus or minus just the square root of five. So those would be my exact solutions. Negative three plus or minus the square root of five. And when I type that into my calculator, I do negative three minus the square root of five and get negative 5.24 and plus the square root of five would be negative 0 0.76 for my exact solutions. Okay, on this one, I am gonna rearrange this so that everything moves to the left side. So that's gonna be x squared plus eight x minus one. So a is one, b is eight, and c is negative one. So, my quadratic formula would look like negative eight plus or minus the square root of eight squared minus four times a times the c value of negative one all over two times one. Okay, let's simplify there. So notice that every time I'm doing this, I'm starting by simplifying what's inside the square root. So we would have the square root of 64 plus four, and that would be divided by two. So I have negative eight plus or minus the square root of 68 over two. And again, 68 can be simplified. 68 is four times 17. So when I simplify that, the square root of four is two. Square roots of 17 divided by two, and then again, we need to make sure that we reduce all of it. So I would get negative four plus or minus the square root of 13. So that again is my exact solution. And when I type that into my calculator, negative four minus the square root of 17 is negative 8.12 and negative four plus the square root of 17 is 0 0.2. Okay, those examples all represented solutions that were real. So now we're gonna talk about, okay, what about if our quadratic formula works out and we don't get real solutions? So we have something called the discriminant. So the discriminant determines the number of real solutions, which is what all of ours just were, and what we're going to work on next, which is imaginary solutions. So we should know that when we take the square root of a negative, we will get imaginary solutions. So that part that's in the square root, that's our discriminant. So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. If that's a positive number, it's greater than zero, then I'm going to find two real solutions, which is what we just did in all of our examples. If that discriminant is exactly zero, the square root of zero is only zero. And so we would only have one real solution. It doesn't have a plus and a minus. And then if the discriminant is less than zero, it's a negative number, we know that we're taking the square root of a negative number. So that means we're gonna have two imaginary solutions. 
So that discriminant helps us to figure out if we're gonna end up with real or imaginary solutions. Let's practice that a little bit here. So for this one, we're just finding how many real or imaginary solutions there are. So we just need to do the discriminant. It still starts the same way. So A is nine, B is negative 12, and C is four. So we still identify those. And then we're gonna do B squared. Remember that if you're squaring a negative, you need to put it in parentheses. Minus four times A times C. And that would give me, oops, six four. It would give me 144 minus 144, which is zero. So that means that there is one real solution. Now, one is, or zero is not the solution, but it's telling me that when I finish simplifying the entire quadratic formula, I'm going to come out with one real solution. Okay, let's try another one. Again, it has to be equal to zero. So I would subtract the 28. So in this case, A would be two, B would be negative. Nope, this one doesn't have a B value. We have no X term. So B would be zero and C would be negative 50 when we combine the negative 22 with the negative 28. So when I do B squared minus four AC, I'd have zero squared minus four times A times negative, negative 50. And when I simplify that, I get a discriminant of 400. That's a positive number, so that means I have two real solutions. Okay, let's look at this last one. Again, I need to get it equal to zero, so I'm gonna subtract that four X. So my A value is gonna be three, my B value is gonna be negative four, and my C value is going to be two. So B squared, again, being careful to square the negative and B value, minus four times three times two. All right, so that would be 16, and four times three is 12, 12 times two is 24. So that gives me a discriminant of negative eight. That means we have two imaginary solutions. So again, the discriminant doesn't tell us what the solutions are, but it does help us identify what kind we're going to get. So let's look at finishing solving some of those with actually doing it here. Okay, so we're going to identify those coefficients again. So A is one, B is negative four, and C is 13. So when I simplify this, or write it into the quadratic formula, I should say, opposite of negative four is positive four, plus or minus the square root of b squared, being careful to square the negative, minus four times a times c, all over two times a. Okay, so oops. plus or minus, let's simplify that square root here. So I would have 16 minus 52, and that would be negative 36, all divided by two. So this one, I'm taking the square root of a negative. So hopefully we remember from our um, prior learning that the square root of 36 is six and the negative makes it i for two. So when we have solutions like this, they're complex, which means that I can't combine the real and the imaginary. So I need to divide each part by that two, so that would be two plus or minus, and then I need to divide the imaginary part, three i. So my two solutions there are still two, but this time they're imaginary. Okay, 
this one when I rearrange this so I got to get these guys over to the other side my a value would be five the b would become negative six and the c would become three so when I plug all those in I would get six plus or minus the square root of negative six squared minus four times a times c all divided by 2 times a. Okay, so simplifying that, that square root, I would get 6 plus or minus, let's see, 36 minus 60, that would be the square root of negative 24, all over 10. So the square root of negative 24. So first of all, I need to split that part into the square root of negative four times the square root of six. So when that simplifies, I would get two i from the square root of negative four, and then the square root of six stays as the square root of six. Then my last step would be to reduce anything I can. So for my solutions, 6 tenths reduces to 3 fifths. And then 2 tenths is going to reduce to i square roots of 6 over. So those would be my complex solutions. So let's put that all together here and let's kind of do some examples, finding the discriminant, the solutions, and making sure we understand what they all mean. So up at the top here in this box, we have all of the discriminants and solutions. So we're going to use that to kind of help us check our work as we go. So as I do a problem, I am going to find its discriminant and its solutions, and then I'm going to look at which letter matches them up in the top and write those in the box. Okay, so for this first one, I'm gonna to have to get it equal to zero first. So I would have to subtract the six. That would make my A value 12, my B value one, and my C value would become negative six when I move it to the other side. So my quadratic formula would look like negative one plus or minus the square root of one squared minus four, times 12 times negative 6, all divided by 2 times 12. Okay, so let's simplify that here. Negative 1 plus or minus simplifying, we end up with the square root of, when I add all that together, it's 289 all over 24. Okay, so square root of 289 is actually a perfect square. So that becomes negative one plus or minus 17 over 24. So splitting that apart, negative one plus 17 is 16 over 24. And negative one minus 17 is negative 18 over 24. So reducing those, I get two thirds and I get negative three fourths. So two things that we need to look for here. We need to look at our discriminant and we need to look at our solutions. And we are trying to figure out where those numbers are up here. So I can see that my solutions are I. So I'm gonna write that down here. And 289 is my discriminant. That is A on your sheet. I realized there was a mistake there, so I crossed that out. And on your sheet, A is 289 and D is 20, so I made those changes on mine. So for our purposes, knowing what we know, the square root of 289, that is A. And since A, 289, was a positive number, that means that I have two real solutions. 
Let's look at our next one here. This one I need to get equal to zero first, so I'm gonna add the x squared on both sides. So my a value would be one, my b value would be negative 14, and my c value would be 49. So simplifying that, I would get 14 plus or minus the square root of negative 14 squared minus four times the a value times the c value all over two times the a value. Okay, so simplifying that, 14 squared minus four times one times 49, that actually comes out to be zero over two. So again, that zero is not gonna impact our answers at all. So it's really just 14 over two, which is seven. So again, looking at my solution options here, my solution is seven and my discriminant is zero. So let's look up here. The solution of seven and the discriminant of zero, so that's F and H that I'm gonna write down here. And since um, the discriminant was zero, that means I have one real solution only, and it was just seven. Okay, let's look at our last two examples here. For three, I need to get this equal to zero, so I'm gonna subtract the five and get x squared minus six x plus four equals zero. So my a value is one, my b value is negative six, and my c value is four. Okay, um, plugging those in, I get the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c, all divided by two times a. Simplifying that, I get six plus or minus the square root of 20, all divided by two. So the square root of 20 is, or can be simplified to the square root of four times the square root of five. So that would be six plus or minus two root five over two. And then when I simplify there, I get three, because six divided by two is three plus or minus the square root of. Okay, so let's look at our options up here. So for this one, we have three plus or minus the square root of five is our answer, and 20 would be our discriminant. So 20 is D, and three plus or minus the square root of five is G here. So we have G and D. And that discriminant, since it was, since it was positive, means we have two real solutions. Okay, let's do one last example here. This one's already equal to zero, so a is three, b is negative five, and c is four. So plugging those in, I get opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times the c value divided by two times the a value. And simplifying that, I get the square root of negative 23 when I combine those. Keep making my square roots too long. And then we're gonna divide that by six on the bottom. So the square root of negative 23, I can't reduce it, but it does have a negative in it. So I need to take that out for my solutions and make it i root 23 over six. So let's find those solutions up here. It looks like we have e for our solutions. And then remember my discriminant was negative 23. So that's b, so b and e. E for the solutions, B for the discriminant. The discriminant was negative, so that means I have 
two imaginary solutions. And that is how you solve quadratics using the quadratic formula. We'll see you next time.